Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. It's Thursday, December 15th. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. And as hard as this may be to comprehend, it is, it is for me anyway, we're just a little over a week from the Christmas holiday. And of course, this Sunday, we, well, we kick off Hanukkah. That's December 18th. So it is a, well, I guess it's officially time to reap what I have sown, a no, November obsession out along these stretches of beach. I put everything else aside except deadlines and fishing. Uh, it's time to pay attention a little bit to uh, that last minute shopping, running around. And uh, I would imagine that my family is going to see more of those December 27th deliveries. If you're checking online to look for things, that may be what you'll find as well. But here's a thought for you this week with just a little bit of time to go. If you're looking for some last minute shopping ideas for those anglers on your list, be sure to check out thefisherman.com. We've got a brand new online shopping experience. You can get these beanies, these nice beanies, some caps, t-shirts, sweatshirts. I even saw some coffee mugs on there. And of course, my favorite Columbia uh, vest, which I wear under everything this time of year, especially. Uh, but throughout the season, you can get one of those as well. And if you go to thefisherman.com and shop now, when you spend $100 or more, you will get free delivery as well. Again, take one last look as well at that December edition of the Fisherman Magazine, our holiday buyer's guide. All kinds of great goodies for you uh, to dog ear those pages, tear them out, put them on the refrigerator with a magnet, whatever. But the time has come to start finishing off that holiday shopping. And of course, with the December edition, it's sitting around your house somewhere. Keep in mind next week, this weekend actually, we're going to print with a January edition. So out with the old, in with the new, and our boat buyer's guide for 2023, it is a bear. All the hottest new boats and outdoor engines, outdoor motors for your 2023 experience. So the December edition will go on file, the new one will come in, gotta keep up. Now, one gift idea, of course, is a trip to your local tackle shop. Whether you know what you're gonna get, uh, or gift certificates always make a great idea for tackle shops, gift certificates for your local party and charter boats as well. Um, but what I love to give uh, certain people in the holidays is uh, it's for the snowbirds, like my father. Uh, the snowbirds carrying around some, wearing their colors from home, so to speak. And I'll tell you, if you wear uh, something from your favorite tackle shop or boat here, when you're on, uh, in the Keys, you're running around along the beaches, you're in a restaurant down there, you would be surprised. Even going to Costa Rica, somebody sees that shirt, they recognize it for home. It's a good way to meet some friends on your winter trips, which things are gotten a little bit cool here. So uh, we're about in that time. Most folks know I'm a big music fan from, from Nashville Americana to Seattle grunge and everything in between. And as I've said, the bite when it's slow can sometimes be prompted by certain well, let's just say certain magic songs. I'm a big fan of Baba O'Reilly from The Who. It's always worked on board our Team Jersey Devil when it comes to spring fishing for stripers. So if you want to take some music along with you for a day of fishing and also have a, a way of backing up your phone for a, for a recharge, here's Tim Smith with a little more on that and something from Garmin as well this holiday season. Here are a couple of holiday gift ideas for the fishermen in your life. First is the Turtle Box Bluetooth speaker. I bought the speaker back in the spring and I use it all the time on my boat. It's fantastic, it's very rugged, very loud, very well constructed, waterproof, everything on it, stainless steel. You could actually charge your phone from this. And if you have two of them, it will give you stereo sound. Nice thing about this is it's ruggedness because if you've ever had a stereo in a small boat, you usually get a year or two out of them and they stop working. This is great. You bring it with you. You can tie it down on your boat or just leave it around. It is really rugged, really strong and waterproof. Not that cheap, however, it's about 400 bucks. Next, we have the Garmin in reach. This little guy here, another item around $400, but it would be a great holiday gift idea. Now, what this allows you to do for the guys that go offshore or fish in places where you have no communication with cell phone, you can use this in conjunction with your cell phone to send text messages through the satellite to whoever you want. 
It gives you great peace of mind if you need to communicate with people when you are out of cell phone range. Plus, on top of that, it's got an SOS button on it, so if you're in big trouble, you can hit that button and the search team will come and get you. Of course, all of these things require a subscription on this item. Another great feature on the Garmin InReach Mini is its battery life. As long as this antenna has a clear view of the sky, this thing will be broadcasting your position for weeks. Now, it's not cheap. Again, this is 400 bucks, but you got to figure what your safety is worth and the ability to communicate when you're at a cell phone range. And here they are, two great holiday gift ideas that any fisherman in your life would be happy to receive. Don't forget, of course, a subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. It's just $29.95. You get all 12 monthly issues, plus that person on your list. They're going to get all 26 weekly digital editions when we do that again during the height of the season. Of course, being a Fisherman member also means automatic entry into our Dream Boat Fishing Challenge, right? Well, next week, we will officially announce the final standings, the final winners, in the 2022 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge at the Fisherman Magazine, also the Coastal Kayak Clash. So that's coming next week in our January edition. Let's get on to the reports uh, because in, well, in the last month and a half, of course, we've been, you can walk along this stretch somewhere in Ocean County and see all kinds of bedlam somewhere. But maybe, I don't know, last week's rendition, rendition of God Bless America from the ample pipes of Miss Kate Smith, maybe it was for real, maybe, Maybe it is over. Not really. The good news for folks willing to deal with cold hands and a picky bite, it's not so bad out here, especially with the sun, even though the sun is moving farther to the south than I would like. But there are still stripers to be found out here at this point. You might not see the blitz conditions, but depending on where you go, I was following some birds along the beach before. They were popping up here and there. It sure seems like it's a good indication that some sand eels are around. And surf casters all along the coastal stretch should consider packing those tins and teasers uh, at this point. I got a recent report from Paul Stafford at the Fisherman's Headquarters in Ship Bottom who said got a couple on the teaser. Good indication that those bass are on smaller bait, bites or baits. Could be the spearing, could also be sand eels. Jack Glasson posted on Wednesday that he had a few bass, small ones, on the tsunami sand eel imitations, those beautiful plastic lures. So, so yeah, that's about that time. I know in seasons past, we've had a few really good years uh, in Ocean, Monmouth County, when those sand eels pop up. And that may be dependent this year on whether or not some surf casters are on them. So you could sometimes see the birds wheeling and diving in the surf, sometimes at first light. You can find batches of, uh, of birds out along the beach. I'm here in Ocean County. We saw a couple of head boats here uh, just to my south. They look like they were working on them, but they're there. We are getting some indications. In fact, Ray from Grumpy's Tackle in Seaside this week, he confirmed for me uh, uh, that he had a report, a good reliable uh, report on sand eels in the surf on Friday. Now, in our weekly fishing reports at thefisherman.com, we do them every week as long as po uh, folks are fishing and open and sailing. Well, Phil at the Tackle Box said, quote, there are still plenty of striped bass in Raritan Bay and surrounding waters and the few boats that got out in between the weather this past week, well, they enjoyed some really good fishing. So those reports were posted on Monday. And I know it was a stormy weekend, uh, but in between the weather fits, some folks up in the Raritan Bay still experiencing uh, a decent bite. Farther down the coast, Bobby at Fisherman's Den in Belmar said beaches saw a lot of spearing and sand eels, as we mentioned, mixing in with those bunker last week. I spoke to Jason at Fisherman's Supply earlier this week about some of those peanut bunker. They're still in Manasquan River. His thought was they were just kind of staging through the weekend up close to the river mouth, but I have heard reports of more bunker still in the back. Now, he did note, it, uh, note Bobby at Fisherman's, Supply, uh, Fisherman's Den in Belmar, he noted that surf casters along the Belmar Strait have dropped to smaller plugs and plastics. And he has said, especially down here along the Ocean County stretch, uh, where, where he felt a lot of the action had shifted at this point. Hello, Coasty, good job, baby. Uh, if you're watching this week, there were a couple of sailors that went missing out of Cape May uh, over the weekend. Uh, good news was 200 miles offshore, I think of Delaware someplace, um, a, a, a tanker or something found those guys drifting. So good job with the Coast Guard bringing those guys in ashore. If we move down the beach just a little bit, we've learned that stripers appear to be staging for their winter 
here, layover in the Toms River. Uh, I'm along the stretch mid central mid to to northern ocean county right now farther south inside barnegat inlet back in the toms river uh, we do seem to have some stripers we've got that report uh from uh, Ch uh pete at charlie's bait and tackle in normandy also i spoke to dennis at the hook house in toms river this week he said there is a perch bite he's carrying bloodworms but we do find that smaller uh plugs the smaller sp minnows and some of those plastics like the kettle creeks are scoring for some stripers in the Toms River right now. So hopefully that bodes well when it comes to March 1st, 2023. Of course, we can fish in the back bays and the rivers in New Jersey through the end of this month. But as of January 1st, back bay river fishing is shut down to targeting stripers. But hopefully enough of those stripers win or over in some of those areas of the Toms, the Raritan, um, the Mullica, maybe Great Egg as well, and even the Delaware. Uh, just not getting a lot of striper reports in the Delaware right now. A couple of small fish along Fortescue Beach. It's not to say, you know, talking about how things have kind of dissipated along the coast, but there are still a few fish in the mix. Uh, last Wednesday on the moon, Lou Hernandez let me know that he caught and released a 28 pounder on a white mag darter fishing at night uh, somewhere around the Manasquan area. Now, as we go even farther down south below the uh, the DMZ, right? It's almost like a, that invisible boundary we talk about at Barnegat Inlet. We have had a, a, some decent fish, as I mentioned, along the LBI stretch, decent fishing, I should say. But still, Atlantic, Cape May County, they just don't get that similar run. Uh, Andy at Riptide said stripers from 25 to 40 inches, though, are being taken by boats, mostly on the troll with shad rigs. But he said the flutter spoons have had their moments, whether it's the Nichols flutter spoon, the Tony Maja drift spoon, found out tsunamis coming out with their own brand of flutter style spoon. That should be sometime in March or April. Keep an eye on that. Again, from Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle, this is a good indication. This final leaderboard on the fall striper derby through Riptide, just how sketchy or picky or slow it was in the surf uh, there in Atlantic County in terms of the volume of fish, boat versus beach, right? Farther south still, we spoke to Joe at Hands 2 Bait and Tackle in Cape May. He said a few anglers are getting out in front of the wild woods. As of last week, found small pods of bunker with, spoon, with, uh, with stripers feeding on them. And again, he said those flutter spoons did the trick right there. Meanwhile, behind the Wildwoods, behind those areas of Cape May County, there's still some bait in the back, still striped bass on the prowl along those sod banks, the creek mouths, and those bridge pilings. That's the striper talk, of course. Hopefully this guy hooks up right behind me. That would be a gem. But as a few people are throwing some of these tins and teasers, I see a tsunami plastic on a teaser here. A lot of folks, of course, turning their attention uh, to the wreck fishing. Black sea bass and porgies, especially in Ocean and Monmouth County. Black sea bass farther into Cape May County. But tog is the one true uh, favorite this time of year, all the way into January and February as well. And in one of the reports we got this week from Lewis Harbor Marina, we may have found out where some of those bluefish have gotten to. It's not that they've completely disappeared, but one of the things that I've been hearing, especially from a couple of the commercial guys that I know, is that those bluefish have been offshore. Lo and behold, Lewis Harbor Marina reported last week that the, Falga the Falgowski boys aboard Perfect Mixture reported a 9.9 pound tog and an 18.4 monster bluefish. So bluefish, there's so much bunker. Come on in, come on in and join the party. Plenty of party and charter boats though, throughout the region, sailing for tog, especially just north of me out of Manasquan Inlet, as well as Shark River. Uh, and in Shark River, actually, Captain Steve Spinelli reported that Gene Blindberry from Holland, PA, was out aboard the Skylarker earlier this week, had a 12-pounder. So it's good to see some more of those boats uh, jumping onto the tog grounds. Uh, I understand that there were still a few in the uh, Point Pleasant Canal and along some of the jetties, but you can expect as things really start to cool off here finally, that those tog are gonna start moving to some of the outside and offshore wrecks. And with a chill in the air now and things getting colder, actually it's colder now than normal this time of year, but perhaps a warm galley or some 
heated rails like you'll find aboard the Dauntless out of Manasquan, uh, uh, Manasquan Inlet will leave you itching for some fishing this weekend. Get on some of those jumbo black sea bass, maybe a few porgies as well. Do not forget, of course, we talked about striped bass back bay being off limits at the end of December. Black sea bass as well, well will come to a close as of December 31st. So it looks like smooth sailing today. Hopefully some guys got out and loaded up those coolers. Snow on the ground out in the Poconos, but I understand there's still plenty of open water. That's the word from George, our Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, we're only a week away from Christmas here, and we still have some open water fishing to do. Uh, you know, we've got this uh, storm coming in uh, today. Uh, it could be really bad later on, but right now, if you guys want to get out for this weekend, I think we're looking good. Uh, good good chances. You know, we have lots of uh, open water with uh, trout and smallmouth and muskie. We've been talking about these for weeks now. Uh, even in New Jersey, you got some lake stock with Atlantic salmon. It can make for a real interesting end to the open water season if you guys want to get out and try that. For right now guys let's uh, get ready for the holiday we only got a few more days left and then we can get out on that hard water before too long from pennsylvania i'm george your pocono outdoors guy from the pocono mountains to the pacific coast of costa rica let's check in with my friend captain ben gilmore jackpot sport fishing at a marina pez vela in capos hey there guys this is ben gilmore checking in from costa rica and the marina pez vela the December bite down here in Costa Rica is just insane. We just returned from a full day offshore fishing trip today. We caught one of the biggest sailfish I've ever seen. It was about 120 pounds and measured 108 inches. Just amazing stuff for our anglers from Utah. Today we also had five tuna and two big dorados. Fishing is on fire. The dorados and tuna fishing this month has been insane. Lots and lots of fish. Dorados in the 20 to 30 pound range, tunas in the 20 to 50 pound range. There's blue marlin, striped marlin, and sailfish out there also, as well as rooster fish and snook inshore. We'd love to see you guys down here this winter. Give us a call, Ben Gilmore, Jackpot Sport Fishing. Back to you guys. We spoke about black sea bass before. Well, the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council was meeting this week uh, to discuss all the beautiful regulations we can expect to see in the future. Captain Harvey Yankinson, Vetcraft Sport Fishing, is one of the advisors for the council. He sat through the meetings, provided us with a great summary of what to expect in 2023. I'm not sure how this makes sense at all, but I'm gonna explain it anyway. It seems to be that we're going to get a 10% cutback on black sea bass. The population that is triple, I think what it's supposed to be, triple the stock biomass, yet it looks like we're gonna get a 10% cutback on black sea bass, and it looks like porgies as well. Now, I do want you to keep in mind, there's something called the Recreational Reform Initiative, uh, also the Harvest Control Rule. It's winding its way through the process there at the council. It's a tedious, difficult thing. A lot of folks chimed in on it last, uh, last year. But as it's working through the process, I'm gonna try to see things uh, from a glass full perspective. The way it's been explained to me, look, if we see a 10% cutback on black sea bass now, the hope is by 2024, we're gonna see a much better, a much better black sea bass fishery. I hope that will be the case. As far as the fluke front, even more confusing, one particular model has us going for a 10% increase in our fluke limits for 2023. Yet another model says, no, you should cut it back by 10%. So you'd figure the obvious middle ground as Captain Adam Nowalski, our council advisor, one of our council advisors here in New Jersey, as Adam said, let's, let's split the difference. Let's just make it status quo, no increase, no decrease. Apparently that kind of had the council knickers in a twist. So I'm not exactly sure where we stand at this point. It's still a little bit too early to say. Some of the council members felt if we just kept with status quo, that would make us out of compliance. Well, I'll tell you what, what we don't know at this point, I hope to find out more uh, the first week in January. That's when the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council will convene, January 5th, I believe. I expect that we will find just a little bit more information on where we stand with fluke and sea bass at that time. We'll tell you that one of my New Year's resolutions for 2023 
is to get a few folks in front of the microphone. I'm going to take the show on the road, create a new podcast, an audio only thing. I want to talk to folks in their shops, talk to folks in their boats, and maybe talk to a few of these people on the beach as well. That's something that's coming. But if you'd like to enjoy this weekly video forecast segment while you're driving, maybe you're sitting in the confines of your office, you want to put the earbuds in, you can find this podcast audio only where you find all of your favorite podcasts on your personal device or on your home computer at home. But make sure you look for that. And in the future, we're going to be doing some more stuff as far as the audio podcasts. I will remind you, don't forget to do your holiday shopping with us over at thefisherman.com. Get yourself a nice beanie for the winter season because you're going to need it. It's getting cold out here along the beach. But as this gentleman shows and several other along the stretch that I've talked to, it is not time to put the gear away. Let's hope for a sandy old bite materializing very soon. But until we find out more, well, catch him up this weekend and I'll see you on the beach. And I'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com.